You are my hiding place. You come and fill my heart with songs of deliverance when ever I individuals that all of you know, and they call it prime time. Everybody know prime time. Dion Sanders, amen. A very prominent individual, amen, who basically had all kinds of money, all kinds of, uh, he had an extravagant lifestyle. And, and you know, this, this, this guy has shared his testimony on numerous occasions with so many people because, see, he was at the point of his life that he was going to commit suicide. And this man had what? I think he said he had a Lamborghini for $375,000. He had this yep. Lamborghini. He had everything he ever wanted in right. life. But right. yet, he was not happy. Yep. He was not pleased. Because, see, sometimes we think material things will please us. But it's not about the material things. It's not about how much you got. Amen. Amen. And it's not about how much you don't have. Amen. But it's about, amen, when you find him, you will find you. Amen. And you'll find out what God has for you. Because, see, you're searching for peace. Some people are searching for peace. Some people are, are, are searching for a, a, a righteousness. They're trying to say, well, I just want somebody uh, to understand that whatever things I've done, I might have been wrong about it, but I need some peace of mind because I know it wasn't right. So you're searching, trying to find some kind of peace of mind because certain things has happened in your life. Certain things that you've done and you probably said, well, I don't know whether or not they could ever forgive me for what I've done. I don't know whether or not they, you know, anybody really paying any attention to me because I'm going through some stuff and I'm not sure whether or not that person really would forgive me. But listen, let me tell you, there is a way God has uh, made a way for us to be able to get through every obstacle, to be able to get through every problem, every issue that we face in life. God has provided a way that we can have peace. But we must find Him. And search for him, you will find you. And that's what Dion Sanders did. He had to find Christ. And when he found Christ, he found him. Because all of the money that he had accumulated, you talking about Dion Sanders. I want y'all to go back and read his biography. And what he gone through in his testimony or, or what he shared with the public because this man, amen, whatever he shared, I think as a pastor, the world ought to know. Because see, if you're trying to find happiness in material things, it's not going to happen. 
I said, it's not going to happen. No matter how much money you got. Amen. And he was a prime example of sharing with us. Because this brother said, man, when you got 2,000 suits, 3,000 pairs of shoes. He said, can you imagine that? And then he had a big home. Uh, 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 I think he said it was 15,000 square feet. He had all of these things. And you know, when I was reading the background about it, I was finding out that he was talking about his parents because he said at the age of seven, he said as a little boy, he told his mother, he said, I'm going to have a lot of money one day. He told his mother. Now, his mother was a drug addict. His stepfather uh, was also a drug addict, an uh, alcoholic. And his dad was addicted to drugs. So he came up in an environment that is probably contrary to a lot of us would think that you come up in that kind of environment, you ain't gonna be nothing. But he was determined that one day he told his mother, this is what I'm reading in his biography, I'm gonna be rich. And she said, yeah boy, go out there and cut the grass. <laughs> That's what she told him, you're gonna be rich. See, sometimes we don't know when a child is speaking. You don't know what kind of dreams that child got. You understand, you don't know what God got before that child and what God is doing for them. And this man, Dion Sanders, prime time, and I'm telling you, he came to Atlanta Falcon back in 1989. He, he, he became, uh, 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 started playing for Atlanta Falcon. And then from that, he started playing football and uh, baseball. In the World Series. I mean, this man has done some phenomenal, phenomenal things that God has blessed him to be able to do. And yet, he said, I'm not happy. You got all this and you ain't happy? Somebody said, if you give me a Lamborghini, boy, I go crazy. I, I, I jump up and turn all kind of flip. Just give me a, 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 a brand new car. You don't have to be a Lamborghini. But he had it all. He had everything. But he didn't have what he needed the most. And that's Christ. And when he got Christ, he found the peace that he's been looking for. He said it wasn't in, he said it wasn't in, in, in money. He said it wasn't in all the women. He said, I had two or three women. He said, I want you to know that I made with two or three women at one time. All these things he had. You understand? And these are a lot of things that these young people are seeking for fame. They're seeking to have more money. They're not thinking about God. But the one that you need is God. That's what you need. It's not about the material thing. It's about the spiritual thing that's going to elevate you and make you and cause you to overcome all of these traps that the enemy tried to sit up before your life. Amen. And Pastor said, trap that the Lord. If I can trap you yeah. to elevate you from God. You see, and that's what the enemy does. He wants to elevate you from God. He wants to keep you, amen, from knowing who you are. And that's why many times people don't uh, take the time to really search about the things of God. Now, you can know a whole lot of stuff about life. You can find a whole lot about other things in life. But you don't know a lot about your father. And you ought to know more about your father than you know anything else. Are you listening to me? You ought to know more about him and what he has done for you in changing your life and causing you to live day by day. You ought to know more about your father then you know anything else. And I mean, some of you might be educated, amen. You got all kinds of degrees and all of that. And I'm not knocking that. And that's all good, amen. But the most important thing that you can learn in life will be about your heavenly father. Because when you get him, you will find you. Amen. Listen to what he said here in the book of uh, 1 John. 1 John uh, the third chapter. And listen to what John said. He said this. 
the third chapter, verse first, verse one. He said, "Behold, what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us, that we should be called sons of God. Therefore, the world know us not." Because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it do not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, all when, he, when we see him, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And then he goes on in the next verse. And he says, And every man, I'm going to say every person, that had this hope in them, in him, purify himself, even as he is pure. So in your search, what the, the, the author is saying, what John is saying here, he said, first of all, in the first, he said, behold, first, take an observation. You need to behold, you need to see him. You need to gaze at him because, see, when you behold him, you, you see him. You take an observation of him. And then he began to tell us that, that when you see him, what amount of love that he has for us. He said there's a love that God has for us. You see, until you find him, until you find him, you will never know who you are. You'll never know who you are. Until you find him. When you find him, you will find you. You find out life is all about. You find out what life is all about. What exists in life and what the thing that you are to live by and the thing that you are not to live by. Because, see, there's a lot of things that will try to throw you off track. There are a lot of things that keep you from elevating in God until your search is over with Him. You'll be a wonder in life. You'll, you'll wonder from, from one pole to pillar to pole to pillar to pole. you wonder from one area to another area. Because, see, you hadn't got a hold of nothing yet. See, and that's why the Bible tells us that we got to get rooted in Christ. You understand what I'm saying? It's a part of that we become rooted in Him. Because, see, until you become rooted in Him, sometimes you can be like a ship tossed to and fro. You don't actually have any sound or, or, or mind of being able to comprehend the things that God is speaking to you. So once you become rooted in Him, you're not like a ship tossed in to and fro. You are in a place that God can talk to you. You're in a place that God can show you. you can, you're in a place that God can reveal to you things that's going to help you to overcome the mindset that the enemy is trying to use against you. So that's why it's so important that as believers, we must become rooted in Him. This is what He said. Behold, what manner of love, what manner of love that the Father has given unto us, that, amen, that we should become sons of God. And when I say sons of God, I mean that all of us have been adopted into this. It's nothing that you was born into, but you became adopted into this thing. And see, just like being adopted, being adopted child, some people get a problem with adopted child. But it's nothing wrong with adopted child. Because if you adopt that child and you show your love toward that child and you father that child as though that child is your own, it's nothing wrong with being adopted. And that's the same way it is with God. See, God said you have have been adopted as my son. So when you became adopted as my son, as my daughter, amen, I want you to know that there's an abundance of love, there's an abundance of peace, there's an abundance of joy.
are. There's an abundance of resources. There's an abundance that I'm handing to you. The same, amen, privilege that my son had. I'm giving you the privilege. Even though you adopted, but I'm giving you a privilege amen. to be blessed by me. Amen. So when God said, you as a believer, God said, I adopted you as my son, as my child. And therefore, you are entitled to all of these blessings. Amen? Amen. Amen. All of these blessings. Amen. And then he goes on. Go to Galatia with me right quick. I, I, I know I'm kind of rushing it, but I want you to go to Galatia. And I want you to get this because I'm talking about adoption. And I'm talking about finding him even as a child of God. Amen. You don't know him. This is why he said, behold, amen. Uh, when we see him, we're going to be like him. And that means that we purify ourselves when we can get a comprehension of what God is doing in our life. And when we find out more of the things that Jesus has done for us, it helped us to overcome whatever battles and issues that the enemy tried to use to manipulate our mind and to keep us at a standstill. Because see, if the devil's job is to cause you to do wicked things and evil things and not to do godly things. You understand what I'm saying? Because that's how he moves. That's how he operates. The devil wants you to continue in wickedness. He wants you to continue to do things that are ungodly. Things that, that, that God don't approve of. So therefore he'll keep you out of mindset making you think this is what you have to do. But once you find Christ, once you find God, amen, amen, you will find you because in him, everything, everything that you could ever hope for, you could ever need, is in him. Amen? This is what it said, Galatia, the fourth chapter. If you have to say amen. amen. Galatia. Amen. And this is what he said in the fourth chapter of Galatia. And I'm just going to kind of be brief because I know that time is an essence and I want to try to... Uh, finish up as much as I can and then we'll finish up uh, next Sunday with the same message. Amen? Amen. Because I want you to get this thing. When you find you, when you, when you find him, you'll find you. Amen? Listen to what he said here. Galatians the fourth chapter. In the fourth verse. He said, but when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son then an heir of God through Christ, how be it then when you were knew not God, you did service unto them which by nature are no gods, but now after that you have that you have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements whereunto you desire again to be in bondage? So what all Paul was saying to the church of Galilee, he was trying to get them to understand that you have received some adoption. God has adopted you into the family of God. And now since God has adopted you into the family of God, he's telling them, he said, now, 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 why are you in a place now where when you knew no God, you was doing things to other gods. You weren't serving God. But now since God has saved you, now since you have come into a relationship with God, why are you doing other things? You need to be in that place where you are serving God and that you're not carried away with the bigly elements of this world. You're not carried away with the observation of days and, and months. This is what he wanted them to understand. So I'm saying to you today as believers that you are a child of God. When you find him, you will find you. Because what God has done Adopting you as his son, as his child, amen, cause you to overcome every demon, every evil spirit that the enemy tried to place on you. Even being a slave to fear, 
Some people's got fear in their heart. You're no longer a slave to fear because God has delivered you from the elements of this world. Everything that the devil do, you ought to give God some praise in the house. Everything that the devil tried to keep you in bondage in, God has delivered you. That's why when you find him, you found you. And that's what I hope and trust today. That this word, amen, in your search for Christ, in your search for Christ, you find me. You'll find it. That you find you in your search for him. That's what God wants you to do. He wants you to be able to know who he is. Because through him, you will be blessed. You will be strengthened. You will overcome. Every force of the enemy. Amen. Amen. Stand to your feet. Amen. Amen. I'm going to stop. I'm not finished. But I am going to stop. And that's why I hope and trust. When you take in consideration. All of the things of this world. That's why the Bible says. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And other things will be added to you. But then he said. What do it profit a man if he gain the whole world? And lose his own soul. Amen. You don't have nothing. What do it profit you to gain the world? And you know soul is lost. And that's what Dion Sanders. He came to that conclusion. That he had the world. But his soul wasn't right with God. So in search for Christ. He found him. He found himself. And it's almost like the prodigal son. Who came to his senses. The prodigal son. He had to come to his senses because he, he had uh, went out and did all of the ungodly things he wanted to do. But then when he found himself in poverty and he found and he thought about God, my father all my father uh, uh, servants eat better than I eat. And then he came to the conclusion that he needed to surrender back to his father. And he went to his father and he asked his father to forgive him. And that's how God would do for you. If you render your life and you ask him to forgive you, the Lord will forgive you. And not only will he forgive you, but he will put a robe on you. And he will place a ring on your finger. Because he loved you just that much. But you got to be willing to surrender to him. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today for the word of God. We thank you, Father, for the power of the Spirit. And even as we bow before you, I pray for all of them who are listening right now. I ask God that you touch in their lives and that you continue to build them up. Even when they're being torn down, I pray that you restore them, God. Strengthen their hearts to serve you and to honor you. I thank you for the families that are represented here today. And I pray for all of them, God, that you may be glorified and that their lives may continue to be built up in you. You are King of King, Lord of Lord, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Whatever I close it.